that there was, um, I think, a little technical issues, and some of you might not have seen the beginning of Vanessa's presentation. So um, I just wanted to let you know that uh, we're advisors from the Division of Biological Sciences. My name is Evan Tucker. This is Vanessa DeBoer, who Hi. is presenting. Um, and in case any of you missed um, the beginning of Vanessa's presentation, um, she just included the links we went over. Um, and um, just to kind of give you a recap, um, some important things are that um, all the Division of Biological Science majors are capped. So that means that if you're a transfer student, you have to be admitted to UCSD in the Division of Biological Sciences to be one of our majors. So if you were admitted to a different major, say, you know, bioengineering, which is part of the engineering department, or biochemistry, which is part of the chemistry department, you wouldn't be able to switch in to a division of biological science major. So we've got seven majors, as Vanessa mentioned, bioinformatics, general biology, ecology, behavior, and evolution, um, several others. And you can learn more about that from those links that we included. Um, also, another key thing that Vanessa mentioned is uh, the transfer major prep. Um, so I'm just going to show you um, a, a web page about that really quickly when I start my part of the presentation, because it's relevant to that. Um, but before we move on to that piece, does anyone have any questions um, about um, Vanessa's portion of the presentation that she just did? And if you do, you can send those questions through the Q&A feature. Um, so it doesn't look like we're getting any questions right now, but feel free to um, send them in as we're talking anytime. Um, as I said, I, I know some of you might have missed the beginning. So um, if anything is confusing or you feel like you missed something important, just feel free to ask. We're, we're happy to address it. Um, did you have anything you wanted to add before we move on to the next part of the presentation, Vanessa? Um, I don't at this point in time, I think you had already mentioned um, that will be, I don't know if everybody had caught this because it was at the beginning, but we're going to be sending all of these links via email to all of the attendees. So you will be getting this information that you can review at your leisure um, after the presentation as well, if you missed any of my talking points in the beginning. Yeah, so we encourage you to just follow along with the presentation, ask us any questions you have, if you want to um, go sort of more in depth looking at our website, that would be great. And um, those links are in the chat and they'll be getting emailed to you. Um, uh, it looks like we have one question um, and they're asking if we've covered the undergrad research yet and we haven't. So we'll be getting to that towards the end of the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, yeah and um, uh, someone just asked um, about uh, how you decide if OOS um, university courses are accepted from the required courses needed for transfer admission. Um, so that's actually a great question, um, which I'm going to address in the next part of this presentation. And then um, if what I've presented doesn't um, seem like it's answered your question, uh, feel free to let us know and we'll We'll go into it a little more. Um, Evan, I do have, um, there was a question about what are the seven majors offered within the Division of Biological Sciences that I'm yeah. seeing. Yeah, do you, um, wanna, do you wanna show that? Do you wanna show that screen real quick, Vanessa? Yeah, I'll just share that screen for those of you who missed that screen. So let me go ahead and go back to my presentation here and share my screen. I know I wasn't sharing in the very beginning um, okay, so these are the seven majors offered within the, within the division. So we have ecology, behavior, and evolution, general biology, microbiology, bioinformatics, human biology, molecular and cell biology, and neurobiology. I also did note earlier in the presentation that our requirements have changed quite a bit um, from year to year, the past four or five years. So when you are looking on the biology website, um, let me just show you it is important to note 
that you will want to look at the major requirements for students admitted fall 2020 and later, um, since they have kind of shifted a little bit over the years. So you wanna make sure you're looking at the most accurate requirements. When you open up one of the sections, it is gonna have drawers that's gonna list all the majors that are offered within um, for all the requirements that are, that are required for that major. And then you will also be able to pull up a major check, which is gonna have a little bit of more of a visually appealing way of looking to see what's required for that major. So I'll go ahead and stop my share. Hi, and also another thing in that vein is um, one way that students often get confused about the major requirements is instead of looking through our website by admit year, um, students will just say Google UCSC human biology and what will come up is um, the year that has the most hits or a search the most commonly or something like that, but it's not necessarily the year the student was admitted. So as Vanessa said, it's great to go through our website and look by the admit year. That's the most um, reliable way to do that. And um, then um, someone asked a question about organic chemistry. So we'll just answer that real quick before we move on. Um, someone says, has the organic chemistry course kind of changed at UCSD? I believe the came series number changed. So um, at UCSD, uh, the organic chemistry courses used to be upper division and um, now they are considered lower division courses. Um, so that's the difference. Um, they're, uh, as far as I understand, still covering similar content, um, but uh, they're considered lower division courses now. Um, so just to move on to our next section, I'm gonna share my screen real quick and just show you for anybody that missed it, um, the transfer major prep webpage. Um, so uh, transfer major prep are um, the series of courses that students need to complete um, in order to be considered for admission to UCSD as a biology major. So we've got um, build one and build three, chem 6A, 6B, 7L. So that's the general chemistry series with the lab. And then um, these two calculus classes, math 10A and 10B or 20A and 20B, um, students need to complete uh, courses with a C or better, C minus or better, and earn a minimum 2.5 GPA in the transfer major prep courses. Um, we do accept AP and IB as well as A levels. So um, that is relevant to um, what I'm gonna be presenting about because one common thing that students ask us uh, is how do I know if the courses that I'm taking or planning on taking are equivalent to the transfer major prep courses like Build 1 and 3 or Math 10A and Math 10B. So one great resource is a website called Assist. So Assist uh, is a website that shows how um, some California community college classes transfer to CSU and UC universities in California. So for example, um, if a student went to a local community college, like for example, San Diego Miramar, we can look on this drop down menu with all these California community colleges. Um, we can scroll back to San Diego Miramar. And then if this student is wondering how courses transfer at to UC San Diego, they can click on UC San Diego um, the academic year is important, you know, depending on when you took the class. And then if we're going to view the agreements, I like to look at it by department. So for example, um, let's look at the biology courses first. Um, so one thing I really want to note here is that, um, this is a series to series equivalent. So equivalency. So what that means is that um, you have to take the whole series of these biology courses at Miramar, and then you get the whole series of credit at UCSD. So a student takes um, biology 210A and biology 210B. So these are two semester-long classes. 
at San Diego Miramar College, and then they end up with build one, two, three, and four credit. So that's our entire uh, lower division biology series with the lab. So um, you can tell that the whole series is required to get um, credit for the whole series because it lists both courses. So for, for each course, so for example, when a student just takes biology 210A, they would get no credit at UCSD. Um, but if they took 210A and 210B, they would get the credit for build one, build two, build three, and four. So all these um, community college um, biology series are series to series equivalencies. So there's not a there's not a course for course equivalency. So you know you're not taking a course at a community college that's just equivalent to say build three. Um, so that's really important to recognize. Um, and then and why that's also significant is a lot of these lower division courses that students um, will take for transfer major prep or to prepare for the major. So the biology, chemistry, math, physics, um, many of those are series. And so um, the best thing to do is take the entire series at one community college, and then that will transfer most cleanly um, to UCSD. Um, you know, if we're looking at, say, for example, um, you want to take the uh, statistics class that's required for the major, which is Math 11, you can see that Math 119 is equivalent to Math 11. So that's an example of a course where there's this one for one equivalency. But usually for the series, um, it works more closely to what I showed you with the biology courses. And um, so ASSIST is super helpful for planning what courses you want to take at a community college in preparation for meeting transfer major prep and getting lower division requirements out of the way if you're going to come to UCSD. Um, but what it's showing is how courses from one community college uh, transfer to another university. But what we sometimes see students do is take courses from a series at multiple community colleges. So that is something that you will not see represented on ASSIST. Um, and so if a student has done that, like say taken the first biology course at um, San Diego Miramar College and the second biology course at Grossmont College, um, first admissions is going to need to decide whether that student has um, met the requirement um, for transfer major prep. And then also if the student is admitted, us, biology, we will need to decide what those courses are actually equivalent to. So just because you took, say, the first course at one college and the second course at another college doesn't mean that um, you are guaranteed uh, to get um, all the credit from the series or even any credit at all. It, it just depends on the particular situation. So our recommendation is to, um, for students to start and finish a series at the same institution. Um, now, let me also show you, um, there is a tutorial for assess. Um, so let me just get that up here for a second. Okay, so um, you can see um, there's this assist tutorial on YouTube, which we've also given you the link to. Um, so you can uh, look at that later if you want to know, learn a little bit more about how to use assist. And then we have something else that can also help you figure out um, how courses might transfer to UCSD on our webpage. Um, we have this courses taken outside of the Division of Biological Sciences page. So that um, allows students, it's a searchable page, 
and it allows students to um, type in, say, a particular course they took or a particular at a particular university. So, you know, if I took a course, let's say, at UCLA, um, uh, so I can type in the name. And you see um, this shows courses that um, other students have petitioned from UCLA. So we see if, you know, for example, a student takes uh, Bio 1100 and Bio 1200, this is equivalent to Build 1, 3, and 4 at UCSD. And it also shows when this expires. So when we review courses that students have petitioned, the um, equivalency is good for a period of five years. So this um, is helpful if you have taken courses at schools outside of California, if you've taken courses at four-year universities, um, you might find that information here. Uh, if you don't find the information you're looking for on ASSIST um, or on this course is taken outside of the Division of Biological Sciences webpage, then um, you'll likely have to uh, petition the courses to biology once you're admitted to UCSD. So um, another thing I just want to um, bring up for you to consider when you are planning um, how you might meet your prepare to meet your major requirements when you come to UCSD is that um, all courses offered at community colleges are lower division. So sometimes the reason I bring that up is because sometimes a student will take a, um, a microbiology course or a physiology course at their community college, and then they'll come to UCSD and see that, um, you know, uh, BIPM 100, our physiology course, or BIM 120, our microbiology course is required for their major. And so they may think they've already taken it at the community college, but a lower division course can never be considered equivalent to an upper division course. So you're never going to have taken a course at your community college that is um, equivalent to upper division requirements for your major at UCSD. And then one final thing I wanna say before um, we open up the floor to questions is that, um, an important thing to remember is that you need to send your official transcripts to UCSD um, so that the courses you've taken can be posted on your academic history. Now, I think you know, um, you probably all know you do that when you apply to UCSD as you send your transcripts, but sometimes students take courses um, after they've applied to UCSD, but before they've started at UCSD. So maybe you apply, send your application in and you're applying for fall of 21, but um, summer of 21, you take some courses at your community college. So because you had sent your transcripts in earlier, we don't know about the new courses, so we're not able to evaluate them for credit. So just remember, if you take additional courses, you each time you have courses that you want evaluated, you're gonna have to send your official transcript to UCSD admissions. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and Vanessa is going to join us again. And I'm um, going to see if uh, you have any questions that you'd like us to address. So Evan, I see we have one um, for admittance to a biology major, major. Do you consider overall GPA or major prep GPA? Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Michael from admissions um, since this is a question um, for admissions. We don't evaluate students' transcripts when they're being admitted to UCSD. Yeah, so we let we try and let students know um, about the transfer major prep requirements for um, being considered for a biology major at UCSD, but it's always UCSD admissions that is deciding who's admitted to the university. Um, looks like we have another question. Um, are most students able to complete their bachelor degree in two years? So um, that really depends on how much lower division coursework uh, a student has taken before they transfer to UCSD. 
So if a student, you know, had only taken the transfer major prep courses, it would be hard to finish um, in two years. And so we see students who don't have all their lower division coursework done, who sometimes um, have a difficult time finishing in two years or six quarters is sort of how we look at that. Um, on the other hand, we have students come in, you know, that have completed, say, all their lower division um, biology, their organic chemistry, their general chemistry, their physics, their math. And so for those students, it's actually, I would say, pretty easy to finish in two years. So um, it, it really just depends how much lower division coursework you have completed. Um, do you have anything you'd like to add as far as that question goes, Vanessa? No, other than just uh, kind of driving home that it is important to meet with an advisor at your community college. I think that they would be really helpful in planning to make sure now that you know what transfer major prep you need to complete and the requirements for the biology majors. If you wanted to fit in all the lower division requirements for your community college, it'd be a good idea to make a plan with your community college advisor. Yeah, and, and that also connects to sort of what I said earlier about um, finishing a, a series at the institution at which you started it. So um, sometimes it just gets complicated uh, because of how the equivalencies work to split, you know, to say start your physics at one institution, but then try and finish it at UCSD or start your OCHEM at your community college and then finish it at UCSD. So I think I think it is good if you're planning to start those courses there to uh, maybe plan, as Vanessa said, with your college advisor in a way that you could finish up those series before you transfer. Um, and then it looks like we have another question, Vanessa. Do you want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, okay, so as a bio environmental science transfer student interested in marine science, i.e. oceanography, how easy would it be to hypothetically major minor after tra transferring? I know Scripps has its own specific research, but is it possible to transfer as a bio major and do research for Scripps or be able to take ocean science related classes? Okay, so this is a pretty specific um, questions. I, question, I do want to point out that um, the marine biology major is housed within the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. So the SIO department um, that's housed within Scripps. So it's a separate department that's not within the Division of Biological Sciences. Um, however, say you are admitted as a biology major, um, like general biology, and you're interested in taking um, marine bio courses, they do have a marine sciences minor. So I think that that would be possible to potentially major and minor. Um, most minors at UCSD are seven courses. However, there is some overlap between the marine sciences minor and a bio major. So it could potentially be less than that. Um, so I think it with your question as being able to finish both as a transfer, as a bio major, um, I think it is possible, just kind of um, depending on your situation. So I would say if that's something you're interested in, um, once you're admitted to UCSD, uh, meeting with a bio advisor and potentially an SIO advisor early on um, to get a plan started. So um, like I said, there is some overlap between the two and the Division of Biological Sciences does accept some SIO coursework towards their bio majors, um, but that's something that we can definitely talk about once you're admitted. Yeah, and I, since there's a little ambiguity in your question, I just wanted to um, make sure it's clear that if you would like to be a Division of Biological Science major, um, you have to be admitted to UCSD in the Division of Biological Sciences. Um, so uh, as far as, because um, your question asks, how easily would it be to hypothetically major minor after transferring? So if you were say um, admitted as one of SIO's majors, environmental science or marine biology or something like that, if you were admitted into marine biology at UCSD, you would not be able to become a division of biological sciences major. You could become a general biology minor. And if you were um, admitted as a division of biological science major, you could, as Vanessa said, 
um, you know, minor with SIO, potentially do a double major. Um, you could do research at SIO. Um, you can take some of their classes, even if you're not a major. Um, some of their SIO's classes have been approved as biology electives. So students can use some of their classes for major credit. Um, biology offers um, a marine biology conservation course. Um, so those are some kind of different ways that you can sort of have a connection um, between SIO and biology. Um, but just keep in mind, if you would like to be a division of biological sciences major, you will need to apply for that and be admitted as a division of biological science major to UCSD. Um, and so someone has asked if there's much flexibility in taking classes beyond one's major. Um, and so um, that really depends on um, how, how much you have, how much work you have to do to complete your major requirements. So some students have, as I said, have done a lot of their lower division coursework at their community college. And so they have kind of a lot of space in their schedule to take other courses and actually may need to take other courses to meet the unit requirement to graduate. Whereas um, a lot of, there are other students that transfer and are really just trying to just get their major coursework done. And that's, a, that's um, time consuming based on the number of courses they have. So it really kind of depends on your particular situation. And I would just say that um, if being able to take courses at UCSD outside of your major is like a really big priority for you, then it might be a good idea um, to plan with your community college counselor how to get most or all of your lower division major requirements done before you transfer. Um, yeah. I don't have anything to add to that one. Um, but then I do see the next one is, could you tell us a little bit about research opportunities within the department? Um, do most students feel like they've had opportunities to participate? So we are, Evan is going to cover that in um, just a few minutes. So we will be talking about research and um, how you could potentially um, get involved in research or an academic credit and everything like that. Um, the next one, oh, Evan, did you have something you wanted to add? Um, no, yeah, just as Vanessa said, I'm going to address that a little later in the presentation. And um, the next one is, are transfer students able to study abroad without it impacting their time to graduation? Um, that's a good question. And I know a lot of students are interested in, in studying abroad. Um, I think it is something that is feasible. Um, as a transfer student, of course, the time to degree is shorter than if you were here for the entire four years. Um, but I think it is possible to potentially work that in. Um, especially if you are open to maybe studying abroad over the summer, or if not over the summer, maybe studying abroad during the academic year and then potentially taking major coursework over the summer. So um, I think it is something that is possible. And I think it is something that you would want to address with your us, your major advisor and your college advisor early on once you're admitted to UCSD so that we can draft a plan and, and account for that in your plan. Yeah, and I'll say I was a transfer student and I studied abroad um, and it was a terrific experience. And, um, you know, Vanessa and I have both worked with other transfer students who have studied abroad and had that experience. So, um, but I will say in terms of both studying abroad and finishing in two years, um, I think, you know, when I was a transfer student, I really started planning that while I was still at community college. I, I really started thinking about, you know, okay, hey, my priority really is to study abroad. So um, what do I need to get done here before I transfer to have the kind of space in my schedule available to do that once I'm at the four-year university? So I would also recommend um, considering that too you know, just um, start thinking now about how you can fulfill those requirements at your community college so you have a little more space um, in your schedule to do that when you're at UCSD. And as Vanessa mentioned, there's all kinds of options for that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's all the questions we have for now. So um, would you like to move on to the next session? Yeah, 
So I am just going to address some tips, quick tips about um, transferring to community college. So these are some things that we've kind of um, wanted to give you a heads up about and um, some common questions or scenarios that happen and that we see when students transfer to UCSD. Um, so the first tip, and Evan kind of talked about this a little bit, um, especially with the study abroad question as far as like planning ahead of time and if you're wanting to study abroad or fit other things in your schedule or make sure that you're going to finish in a timely manner when you get to UCSD, um, making sure that you're fitting in everything that you can as far as lower division requirements prior to actually transferring to UCSD. Um, and that in entails planning with your advisor at your community college. Um, we also do want to point out that it is important um, or when possible to finish your series at your community college. So I am going to share my screen um, and just give an example here. So um, if we're looking at assist and um, let's see. And let's say that um, you wanted to get a jump on the organic chemistry series. So organic chemistry is not a sequence that is um, required for transfer major prep. Um, but if you wanted to get a head start on that and complete the organic chemistry sequence at your community college, that might be a good idea to help you get onto upper division requirements when you are here at UCSD. So if we are gonna look at, um, let's see, Palomar College, and we're gonna look at UCSD. When I'm looking, I do like to look by department. So um, if we're gonna look at chemistry. So as far as finishing the series at Palomar College before you transfer, um, as you can see, the assist agreement is that you would need to complete Chem 220 and 221 at Palomar College in order to earn credit for the entire organic chemistry series at UCSD. Now, we encourage this um, mainly because we want to assure that you're getting full breadth of knowledge at your community college um, and just for the sequence, if you're going to be moving on to some type of health-related professional school like a lot of our students do, um, or graduate school, and they are requiring a full year of organic chemistry, it is better if you can complete the entire sequence there at the community college um, in order to make sure that you, there aren't any gaps in the knowledge that you get. So that's just one example, um, completing organic chemistry at, um, at Palomar College is one example there. Um, we also would recommend that, let's say you were planning on starting your physics sequence in spring quarter at your community college, um, but then you're not sure if you can complete it over the summer at your community college and you're intending on completing the physics sequence when you've already started fall quarter classes at UCSD. Now we would recommend um, that you do not try to do this, try to complete a full course load at UCSD and maybe complete a series at your community college um, during fall quarter just because the transition period uh, from your community college to UCSD is already going to be challenging enough. And then trying to pile on, maybe trying to complete a full course load at UCSD, and then also trying to fit in some other coursework at the community college. While at the time it might seem like that's the most effective way um, to make sure that you're meeting your time to get degree and completing everything within two years, it could very well hinder your progress just because um, it might seem a little bit overwhelming and maybe you wouldn't do as well as you would have if you would have just focused on your UCSD coursework. So if you started, let's say a sequence at your community college, like the physics sequence in spring, and you wanted to finish it up at your community college, um, we would recommend, you know, once you're admitted to UCSD, meeting with a bio advisor, um, getting our advice about it and potentially being able to fit it in uh, maybe in the summer after your been admitted to UCSD, but that's just one of the tips that we kind of see pretty often transfer students trying to complete both their first fall quarter here. And it doesn't always end well. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the share and we're just going to answer a few questions about those tips. Okay, so 
It looks like we have one question. Are there any transfer admission programs offered at UCSD that make transfer students more competitive, like honors programs offered at community college? Um, I'm not aware of any. I don't know if Evan, you have. So um, we might just want to let Michael from admissions answer yeah. that in the chat. Um, so uh, because, you know, uh, in uh, advisors in biology, we are not actually involved in students being admitted to UCSD. Um, UCSD admissions is making all those uh, decisions. So um, we'll let Michael address that. And, um, you know, in the vein of what um, Vanessa was saying about kind of that tip she was giving, um, you know, sometimes the, the transition from a community college to UCSD can be a little overwhelming at first, you know, um, the, you know, you're going maybe from taking all lower division courses to upper division courses. Um, the courses here are very challenging. Also, you know, a big difference, um, you know, going from a 16, 16 week uh, semester to a 10 week quarter. Um, so, that is one of the reasons why we don't recommend students take courses at a community college while they're um, full time at UCSD, especially during their first quarter, because um, we really think it's great if you sort of give yourself the space um, to just kind of adjust and make that transition when you're first at UCSD instead of overwhelming yourself by taking what might be too many courses. Um, so, um, that, uh, was just something I wanted to chime in about th with that. And, um, let's see if we have any other questions. Um, doesn't look like we do right now. Um, and so just a couple more things I wanted to, um, let you know. Um, one thing is that, um, every summer, um, we've offered a, a online new transfer um, student information session. So um, that information gets, uh, we used to do it in person. We've moved to an online um, version so students can um, get that information wherever they are. And um, that information is um, given to students when they're admitted to UCSD. And the, um, we have videos that um, give you information about, you know, things like enrolling in courses and changing your major and um, things like that, how to access advising services. So um, if you're admitted to UCSD, you know, you'll be given access to all that great information. Um, and then I wanted to just let you know, since, as I mentioned, uh, Vanessa and I are advisors, what kind of um, advising services are available to you if you're admitted to UCSD. So I am just gonna share my screen with you. And um, this is our advising services webpage. So we have something called the Virtual Advising Center, which is a, um, a secure messaging system that we use to communicate with um, admitted students to UCSD. And um, we call it the VAC. And what the VAC does is, um, in addition to being a way for you to communicate with advisors and advisors to communicate with you, it also keeps a record of all those messages. So you can go back and um, look at those conversations if you need in, um, information from them. When we have a meeting with you, we write up notes, like sort of a summary um, that also has the links that we looked at and we send that to you. And then that allows us to also see how other advisors have advised you so we can make sure we're sort of working in coordination. So that's one way that admitted UCSD students communicate with us. Um, another way is uh, information sessions and workshops like this. Um, we have these FAST 15 drop-in advising sessions. So um, before the pandemic, when we were all in the office, um, that was all done in person. So there'd be certain periods of day where the students could come in and um, just uh, sign in on our sign-in queue and 
Um, we would see students whenever we're available. And um, so it was so students could um, sort of ask quick questions or talk something out in about 15 minutes. Um, now that we're all remote, we offer that same service remotely. Um, and something similar with our scheduled appointments for admitted students to UCSD, we offer 30 minute long term planning appointments. So, um, you know, if you're admitted to UCSD and biology, and you would like to um, make a plan for what it looks like to complete one of those major to complete your major requirements, um, you can sign up for one of those appointments. Um, students contact us through the VAC about that. Um, we do them in person when we're in the office or um, over Zoom um, right now while we're remote. And um, so that's just to sort of give you a sense of um, how you can learn more about the major and access our services uh, once you're a biology student at UCSD. And then um, someone had asked about uh, research for academic credit, which I wanted to mention. Um, so uh, there's an enormous amount of research going on at UCSD, um, particularly in biology. And so um, sometimes students just uh, volunteer in labs. Um, you know, they reach out to professors whose research they're interested in or look on the places where um, announcements get posted for available research positions and contact the professor then. And then also sometimes students do research for academic credit, um, which uh, they can apply to their major in certain ways. And so we have an application process for that. Um, and that uh, is also part of, can be part of our BSMS program that we have um, for students that want a master's in biology. And um, to address someone's earlier question, um, we do have a lot of students participating in undergraduate research. And I think it's sort of a mix of some students that are um, doing it for academic credit versus volunteering. Sometimes students do both. For example, they start out volunteering and then do it for academic credit. Um, one thing just to keep in mind, um, to do research for academic credit, so uh, like BISP 199, if you're doing lab research, or BISP 193, those are the name of the courses, if you're doing biology education research. Um, to apply for those for academic credit, students need a UC GPA. So you wouldn't have that until after your first quarter at UCSD, because um, it wouldn't be till after your first quarter that you have grades here and therefore GPA. And so um, students can uh, look into applying for uh, doing research for academic credit um, anytime after their first quarter at UCSD. So um, let's see if we have any questions. Do you want to, this is a sort of an admissions question, but um, a student asks, how do we students submit AP scores um, for credit. Okay, um, did you want me to go ahead and answer that? I don't know if maybe Michael wants to uh, address that as well, um, since that's an admissions question. Um, but yeah, the sort of brief answer is um, students uh, request the scores from the College Board. So, um, but Michael can give you a little more information about that. Um, so we're in the uh, last um, five minutes of our time here. Um, so before we start wrapping up, does anyone um, have any additional questions? Um, anything about being a biology major that um, we haven't covered or that you had questions about? Um, uh, <laughs> um, that was Vanessa's adorable baby you saw for a second. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, which was great. Uh, so um, one way to find out more about um, biology, if you think of questions later, is um, we have a very informative website, www.biology.ucst.edu. 
has tons of information on it. It's a great resource. We keep it very up to date. Also, if you have, if you want to contact us directly before you're admitted to UCSD, um, you can email us at biousis, so B-I-O-U-S-I-S, at ucsd.edu. Um, and do you have anything you want to add to that, Vanessa? Uh, I don't. I just want to say thank you for attending. And um, please reach out if you do have any questions um, about coursework or about transferring to UCSD. And we'll do your, our best to kind of direct you to the best resource. Yeah. And um, we'll be sending the links that we looked at to everyone via email. Um, also, as um, you know, we've mentioned a couple times, this session um, is being recorded and a recording of this will be posted. So you'll have uh, access to um, um, view it again or share with friends or um, all that. And um, yeah, we just wanted to say thank you so much for coming to this session. And um, as Vanessa said, uh, reach out to us if you have questions and we hope to see you at UCSD in the future. Um, and then someone asked one final question. They said, are there any volunteer opportunities for any UCSD bio projects for someone living in San Diego? Um, oh, thank you. Someone said this was helpful. Glad to hear that. Um, so uh, I'm not sure if this, um, the person asking the question is wanting to know if this is for um, someone once they're admitted to UCSD or uh, a person that's not currently a student at UCSD. Um, but my answer to either would be, um, you know, to look into uh, the research that people are doing at UCSD. And um, if you are interested in their project, get in touch um, and they may only accept students or only accept students doing it for academic credit or want you to have a certain GPA or certain classes. But they also, uh, I have um, talked to community college classes or to community college students who um, started doing research before they started at UCSD. So um, yeah, my advice would just be to look into what's out there and to reach out. And you may also, just one little tidbit is, um, Maybe if you're at a local San Diego community college, if you already live in San Diego, maybe reach out to biology faculty there or your counselor. They may have um, some connections or can guide you to somewhere maybe where you could find research opportunities on a bio project in San Diego before you actually transfer if you're hoping to get some research or get started with that. Yeah, when I was at my community college, I actually got to um, participate uh, in um, ecology research with a professor there and work on an academic poster and go to a conference and stuff like that. So um, yeah, there may be great opportunities at, at your community college as well. Um, so it looks like we're right at our time. So thank you again so much everyone for um, attending this workshop and um, yeah, we hope to see you all at UCSD in the future. Thank you, have a good day.